Okay, so I'm going to go over one example of dice or no dice, and let's have this example be D-O-N-D, -D, six sides. Let's do three rolls and have the last roll be zero. If you're unfamiliar with the command line arguments, take a look at the lab write-up. So main is where you will read in your arguments on the command line, parse them, save them, and main will call your recursive function d-o-n-d -D with six sides and three rolls left and have the last roll be zero. So that means we have three rolls. I'm going to roll a die. Here's the first roll. I could either roll a zero or a one or a two or a three or a four or a five. So these are my options. 0 or 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. And if I roll a 0 or 1, I immediately lose by our rules. Because again, this is sides of the die. This is how many times we have left to roll. And this is the last roll. Okay, so let's see what happens if I roll a 2. I'm going to call d-o-n-d -D with six sides and I have two times left now and I last rolled a two so this is going to be roll two I could roll a zero or a one or a two or a three or a four or a five since I rolled a two last if I roll a 2 now, or a 1, or a 3, I immediately lose. So 0 is okay. What happens if I roll a 2 and then a 0? Then this is going to be roll 3. On roll 3, I could roll a 0, or a 1, or a 2, or a 3, or a 4, or a 5. And if I roll a 0 or a 1, I lose. And this is my last roll because, remember, I was supposed to roll three times. So then I had two rolls left. And then this call is D-O-N-D. -D. Six sides, one roll left, and I rolled a 0 last. So this is my last roll. So if I roll a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 5, I win. But if I roll a 0 or a 1 on roll 3, I lose. So what's the probability of winning when I have 1 roll left and 0 was my last roll? Well, my probability of winning, I'm going to return that, is 4 out of 6, or 2 thirds. So let's take a look at what these other probabilities would be. This is going to be D-O-N-D. Six sides, one roll left, last roll was four. So I could roll a zero or a one or a two or a three or a four or a five. Last roll was a four, so if I roll a four or a five or a three, I lose. Two, one, zero is good. So probability of winning when I rolled a four last, I have one roll left is one half. So I'm going to return one half. And what about if I roll a five on roll two? Let's D-O-N-D. -D. Six, one roll left, last roll was a five. I could roll, this is roll three, this is also roll three. I could roll a zero or a one or a two or a three or a four or five. And if I roll a five, I lose. If I roll a four, I lose. A three, a two, a one, a zero, I win. 
So I return four out of six. So now we've calculated all the probabilities for roll two. So if I have two rolls left and the last roll was a two, then I have a one-sixth chance of rolling a zero. And if I roll a zero, I have a two-thirds chance of winning. If I roll a one, then I lose. If I roll a two, I lose. If I roll a three, I lose. If I roll a four, then I have half a chance of winning. And if I roll a five, I have a two-thirds chance of winning. So each one of these has a one-sixth chance of occurring. So D O N D 622 is going to return 1 sixth times 4 out of 6. That's the chance of a zero roll happening. Or I could roll a 1, or I could roll a 2, or I could roll a 3, or I could roll a 4, or I could roll a 5, 4 out of 6. So this number right here is what gets returned for 2, and it's 0.3 something. I don't remember off the top of my head. What happens now? We need to go back and calculate these guys' probabilities. On roll 1, instead of rolling a 2, what happens if I roll a 3? All of that work was just if I rolled a 2 on the first roll. So what happens if I roll a 3? Well, this is D O N D six. Two rolls left. The last roll was a three. So I could roll on roll two a zero or a one or a two or a three or a four or a five. And since the last roll was a 3, if I roll a 3 or a 2 or a 4, I lose. But what if I roll a 0 on my second roll? Well, then I have one roll left. I'm going to call D-O-N-D, -D, 6, one roll left, last roll is a 0. So I could calculate this. I could roll a 0 or a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5, and it's my last roll. I could calculate that, but wait. I don't do that yet because I've done this before over here. So I don't want to calculate that again. I want to grab that from my cache and just immediately return. 4 out of 6. And then I'm going to call DOND 611. And I do need to calculate that. That hasn't been calculated before. So you guys know how to do that at this point. I don't need to do 2, 3, or 4 because I immediately lose. Then I can calculate DOND 615. But wait, I have calculated that before right here. So I should immediately return from my cache. 4 out of 6. So I hope you guys see why caching makes this faster. Right here, it doesn't make it all that much faster because this was simple math. But if we had started maybe with t is 6 or something like that, that means that at a certain point you've already done these recursive calculations and you wouldn't have to go into all of these recursive calls because it, at some point you will have already done them and you can just retrieve them from the cache. So again, this is an example for DOND dice or no dice. This is CS302 lab B and dice or no dice dot CPP. One more hint is I would make a cache is just a vector of vectors. You don't really need to worry about s, it's always going to stay the same. So I would cache t right here and s right here. Alright, again this was an example of DOND 
using 6, 3, and 0 as our parameters.